Okay, in today's video, we're going to be addressing the 104 spare alarm issue. If you have an OSI controller on your CNC router, you will eventually find this error message, the 104 spare alarm. What does this mean? The most common cause of this error is a bad battery in your controller. And in this video, we're actually going to change out the battery step by step and show you how to do that. The quick workaround is going up here and dropping down to the date and time in your controller. And if you see this 1-1-2007, that means your battery is dead. That's why you can confirm this is the cause of your problem because it's not matching the current day. And that's giving you that spare alarm. So a quick turnaround is you can, once you power the machine up, you can change the date and time in the controller to the present day. And that usually clears that spare alarm, but that's just a temporary fix. As soon as you power off the machine, you will get that 104 spare alarm again and that'll continue until you change the battery in the controller. So here we go today, we're going to change the battery in the controller and we are going to be able to power up this machine and home this machine without leaving it on. Okay, so step one is pretty simple. There looks to be one, two, three, four cables on here. I took a picture so I know exactly where they go back when we're done. Uh, two of these are just ethernet cables and then we've got this cable up here and this one down here. Now we're just going to remove those four cables and then at that point it's just two screws one on top and one on the bottom that's holding that controller to the wall we're going to take that out set it on a bench or a table over here and then we'll we'll go on to the next step but i'm going to go ahead and put the camera down so i can take these cables out with two hands so we don't damage anything okay all those cables pulled out real easily this bottom one has a little tab that you push in on the side with a little arrow on it and then it pulled out nicely but don't forget there's actually a fifth cable, a tiny little ground on the bottom of the controller. I almost forgot that one. So don't forget that. We'll pull that out and then we'll open it up. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is remove these two top screws. When you have the controller uh, sitting like this, we're just going to remove this upper right-hand screw. If you have one of those magnetic dishes that can hold all these screws, that's great. Put them in a safe spot where you're not going to lose them. And uh, for example, this one's already gone. So we don't have a screw here. So we'll go on to the next step. Okay, next we're gonna remove the screws. There's three on this side. There's uh, two on this side. And then there's uh, a couple on the back side as well. So it should be about seven screws in total to remove this cover off. Okay, so it turns out this actually did have a screw in that upper left, but it's been so mangled by somebody uh, before using the wrong tool to try to extract it that it didn't look like a screw at all. There's the standard screw, and there's that one. So I used a little flathead to get in there, uh, kind of grab on what was left, and we're able to pull that out, and now that cover should pop off. Okay, once you have all seven screws, including the one in the back middle, it just simply lifts up. Not a lot of effort needed lifts up and out and out of the way and go on to the next step. Okay, this next step is probably the most important. You've got to be careful. It's not impossible, but our battery is sandwiched underneath this board. If you look over here to the side, see those pins? We've got to remove that board carefully as to not damage any of those interlocking pins. And the battery is going to be on the face of that board underneath. So it's four screws. You can see the little Phillips head right there. One, two, three, four. And then this wire too. Once we disconnect that, then we can lift this up and out of the way. Okay, the cover's off. It just takes a little bit of prying. You might have to pull back a little bit on this faceplate. I also had to remove that black connector that was sticking out. Uh, pull back here, and then everything else should be free to pull up. And again, it just disconnects off of these pins that were sitting in here. So just be careful with that. And... Um, now we can see our battery right there. The Energizer Plus three volt lithium battery. We're gonna go ahead and pop that one out, put the new one in, and then we'll be ready to start putting this back together. Okay, we've just taken out the old battery. We popped in the Panasonic. Matching battery, make sure the plus sign is facing you just like it was when you took the old one out. And then make sure it clicks when it sits in there so it's held in nice and secure. We don't want to have to go through this again and take all this back out. So now we can go ahead and reassemble everything just as we did, only in the reverse order. 
case she's all back in, we're about ready to power this up. But just a reminder why I take a video or a photo of these cables. It's only four cables plus the ground underneath there. But you notice these are both ethernet cables, so I could easily have swapped those out by accident. And also I just noticed this one has the same connector here and then an identical one right below it. So I just went back and referenced, make sure it was the top one and that these colors were correct on, on their location. The top one you can't really get wrong. And same goes for the bottom uh, brown there, but always a good idea again to have those photos or video as a reference to look back on. Now we're going to close this cabinet up and go ahead and power up. Okay, machine is back up and running. And make sure your lights are on. So we've got main power here. And then you do have the button for your PC power. And then the OSI open controller, its uh, power is enabled right here on some models. So make sure that light is on if that's required on your model. And then uh, once this thing boots up, we'll be able to connect. Uh, we also don't need this uh, sticker on here anymore, leave machine on, because we have a new battery in, so we can actually power the machine off without having to worry about that spare alarm coming back. Okay, so now we're booting back up and everything is working. So thanks for watching. This is a quick video on how to replace the battery in your OSI CNC controller. We're gonna go ahead and show you the spare alarm is gone and we can actually go ahead and home this machine out now. Uh, another recommendation is if you haven't done it in a while is running a full backup of all the parameters on the OSI controller. I do have a YouTube video on how to do that step-by-step. -step. I will have that video link in the description below. Thanks for watching.